Hey guys, how are we doing today? Today's video, I wanted to go and talk a bit about all the news that was just dropped yesterday. I'm um, kind of picking apart some of the things, but I want to kind of have a main focus on Starkiller and a new team that is uh, probably going to be coming to life here in the next coming months. Uh, I know a lot of people won't be having him, you know, unlocked first time around or at least the first time he's released. He's gonna be released, or I think he's actually not released once, but he's gonna be going into the, the journey guide. But I'm saying that in terms of who's gonna get him first off the bat. Um, you're gonna get him you know, later on as well. But I wanted to kind of talk about teams that you might wanna, or characters in teams you might wanna farm up for a potential starter killer. I'm not even nowhere close uh, <laughs> to get him. I need Kyle Dash. Uh, Darth Talon, and then we have a new Mara Jade coming as well. They're all great characters. They all actually, it's it's pretty nice. If you guys haven't noticed, they all play into a specific faction or a specific team to make that team a bit better. But I would like to say, Mara Jade is going to be probably the best one out of the four. Um, and so, talking about Mara Jade, let's go show her the show you guys the kit reveal. Um, I think it was Operation Metaverse who got the the exclusive with this one. And uh, it's good to see them have that. I love Gom. Uh, here we go, though. Kit reveal, Mara Jade, the Emperor's Hand. This chick is like a Darth Vader, pretty much. Not like a 2.0, but to a certain extent, Darth Vader. Um, because she's Empire, she's an attacker, and she's an online force user. So, I'll show you why she's really good. And especially good with Emperor Palpatine. So, it says here on her special... This special is an AoE. She has two AoE specials. Um, this one, the second special, the Infiltrate and Disrupt, it gives out debuffs. And if you guys know anything about debuffs with the Emperor Palpatine team lead, is that you get TM. So, look at this. Um, you will be inflicting Offense Down, Shock, Stagger for three or for two turns. So, three different debuffs on all enemies. You will for sure be getting a TM bonus or boost to get another turn in. Um, so that for the next turn, which will happen right off the bat, you will then be proccing with another AoE, all of the staggers, which that means you'll be feeding turn meter to your Empire and Sith allies. So pretty much, you know, I'm not sure exactly how fast this character is. I want to say she's very fast. I think people are saying she's like around 190 around that speed. She's very fast from what I know. So she will be having some serious synergy with Palpatine, but also she could also she could also have some very good synergy with Lord Vader. Anything with Empire, she is going to be phenomenal with. So you want to have her in those teams, right? I, I would assume though that you want to have your own Lord Vader team with like a Maul with some other Empire tanks or tanks in general, and then you're gonna have a leftover team with the uh, the EP lead with Darth Vader, and then you can toss now her in. And there you go. You got a nice top tier, I would say, anything besides a GL team that can kill almost every team out there. Um, very good. It's not just very good. It's ex extremely good. So very, very good. She's definitely going to be one of the better um, marquee event characters we're going to have for a while. So going to be awesome. And it's pretty cool, especially because if that's the case with the EP lead, you don't have to have her with high, high star or gear 13 at all. She's just here for her debuffs, so pretty cool. Anyways, moving on. Uh, her basic does some more uh, some more dazes and some more damage hits. Um, but yeah, I mean, pretty much everything here is kind of similar to that, which is of uh, Darth Town in terms of Loyal Hand. Um, she also has a Territory War Omicron, or Omicron rather. It's pretty good. Um, almost all of these Omicrons for the new Marquis are pretty solid. Um, but the main thing here, the main focus is that without even an Omicron on her, she is going to be phenomenal with EP lead. So just going to mention that really fast. Next up though, and I'll spend the majority of this video talking about Starkiller, is Starkiller just opened up so many opportunities for, for different teams. He really just did. So he is a dark side, an attacker, and an unaligned force user. He is not an empire. He is not uh, whatever. Whatever we thought before he might have been, he is not. He's not got any of those tags besides the one tag that means the most, which is unaligned force user. That is huge. So let's go and keep reading. So it says here his basic can do AoE damage. Bonkers. I mean, that's just crazy. Um, 
and it can't be countered. It can reduce his cooldowns by one if he's got Unleashed. Unleashed you get um, after getting 100 stacks of... Let's see, where is it again? 100 stacks of... Force energy, and you get and you get force energy by just hitting people by just you know in different parts to his kit. It's going to be very easy to get. Um, and then once you have a hundred stacks of force energy, it turns into unleashed, and then unleashed you get some some more bonuses for it. So like for this one special, more damage. For this one right here, you get more debuffs. Can't be resisted. Um, and then it also has an omicron for his uh his second special where it dispels all buffs on all enemies not just one that's pretty big actually but then the cooler thing about this guy is he has his ultimate ability as well so he's not even a gl so it, it's pretty cool to see one without a gl have an ultimate ability so this one it says there's one use per battle and the way you get this um and you're able to use it well first off you can't have any gls on your team it says here, let me show you. Size means nothing. It says right here, you can't have any GLs. If I can find it right here. Start of the battle, if there are no GLs, um, GL allies, and Star Killer has exactly all that, well, you can you can get some more bonuses. But for the actual ultimate itself, you just can't have a GL on your team. Because you can't you you would not be able to have multiple ultimates being popped that's just not something that that cg wanted apparently but um still a very phenomenal kit and like i said you build up force energy um to all of uh by just like playing and using these different specials and basics um and then it says when he's, he's can't talk when he has unleashed you get more bonuses like right here counter chance dispels debuffs on himself bonus turn cooldowns are reset and then you get the size means nothing, which is the ultimate with the cool starship. Anyways, uh, that's pretty cool and all. I think just that right there, everything is super awesome. Um, Unleashed is a very, very powerful opponent or component to his kit. But then I want to talk about something else. And this is where I want to spend a, a few minutes on talking, which is his unique two. Um, he actually has two uniques, but I want to talk about the second unique. The one that has to do with a specific team. Um, this one is pretty interesting. I haven't seen this one really ever <laughs> in terms of anything like that, but um, this one has an Omicron. I think there's three Omicrons on this guy, similar to uh, Django or to a uh, Boba Fett, Scion of Django. This guy seems to be like the GAC version of a Boba Fett, and the Boba Fett's like the TW. It's like both are pretty much the same. They both are like GLs inside those game modes. Um, but for this one, it says here. If there are no GL allies and Starkiller has exactly one Jedi, one Sith, one light side unlined force user, and one dark side unlined force user, well, then you get bonuses. Um, super random, right? But it's kind of cool because it plays in part with some of those marquees that we got and also some older characters that we've had in a long, long time ago. So it says this, if you have all those characters in the right slots or in your team at least, you get more max health and crit damage. 35 speed and then you get some more 100 max protection the first time he's defeated and then it says you're immune to daze and stun but then if you have the omicron you get even more speed the jedi tank allies taunt and then debuff enemies deal less damage and then he can assist if <gasps> there's so much here he can assist if the sith ally uses a basic and then whenever another dark side unaligned force user uses special he or rather they grant all allies critical hit immunity and then also whenever star killer uses an ability light side healer allies have their cooldowns reduced by four and jedi tank allies gain damage immunity and taunt for one turn whenever he uses a special ability he gives those out that is crazy so right there let's go back in the game and just talk about this for a few more minutes because holy cow this is crazy so that that last part dealt with light side healers and then also jedi tanks so let's go look at unaligned force user tag and let's see what we have who do we have that is a healer um well it's really none other <laughs> none other than visus mar herself so <laughs> visus mar finally has a purpose in this game i'm actually gonna just promote her just for the heck of it because uh, she's gonna get some use here guys for sure so visus is a healer light side healer and she's unaligned force user so she's gonna be fitting in perfectly with a star killer team 
Star Killer doesn't even have. He doesn't even have a leadership, it looks like. So you're going to be wanting a different leadership here, but still, you know, it, it, it's just a. Oh my gosh. I can't tell you how excited I am to build a team now with a Star Killer and then a Visus Mar here with some different stuff that can apply to not just everybody because her kit's not for a Jedi, it's not for Dark Side, it, it's for really, really everybody. Her kit can be very, very beneficial to a lot of different allies. Um, so it says here, her one special, that is the revive, it says, if Feast Smart is at full health, after using this ability, she revives a random defeated enemy or ally at half health. So you could potentially keep Starkiller alive. And that I think that fact alone is huge. Um, so yeah, super awesome. Um, right here, you get some stealth up or some heal up rather, health steal, can't talk. And then it says you recover some health equal to 35% of her max health and then the revive. So right here, the team I'm thinking of is one with Starkiller, Vsys Mar, and then we want to have a dark side unaligned force user as well. Well, we have a Maul. Uh, Maul, I feel like is going so many different places right now. It's kind of hard to say. He can fuel Lord Vader's ultimate super fast, but is it that necessary? I don't really think it is. Um, so you could definitely be using Maul in this team as well, even a crew or an OG Kylo, but we want to have a dark side underlined force user. So we want to use one of those. We don't want to use a GL because we want to be able to use our ultimate on Starkiller. So we have both underlined force users and we need now Sith and Jedi. So coming to those different tags for Sith, what would we have? Well, Darth Talon just came in the game. If you're going to get a Starkiller, well, guess what? You're going to have a Relic 5 Darth Talon. And guess what she has? Well, she has more Omicrons in GAC. So there you go. She's a bit more tailored towards this, this triumvirate though. But then the one thing I like about this is that whenever the leader is damaged, all allies gain 5% TM, which is pretty cool actually. So I think she could be pretty good, especially with her loyal hand and all that sort of stuff. But there are so many different options. You can toss in like a BSF. You could have the pre-taunt with a Sith Empire trooper. You could have really anybody here for that Sith slot. There's a lot of different options, which is super nice. And then for the Jedi slot, no GLs, right? We could still use a lot of different stuff. We know that for GAC, we're going to probably have a pretty good team with Qui-Gon Jinn on the Omicron team. Who else could we slot in here? Well, I think Barisafi because of her heal and her cleanses that you get with her unique and her special on the force healing. So pretty much wanting to keep the Visus more alive. The damage in this team will be de definitely be coming from the Star Killer in this whole ultimate. You want to get that ultimate ASAP. Um, all meanwhile, you know, keeping everybody else alive. In theory, though, it sounds good, but I feel like on paper, it's not, or rather in the actual game itself, once we have some people to test this out, it might kind of seem a bit lackluster. This guy definitely feels like he could go both ways. He could go super awesome or super not awesome, <laughs> but we'll have to see. You can also just toss him in Lord Vader, but I feel like there's something here with a team made out of him in the in the, the whole online force user, Jedi and Sith kind of factions. Um, for the leaderships, we don't really have a leadership for either of these guys or for Starkiller or for any of those ones I mentioned. So we're, for like a leadership, I would say maybe a Sith or a Jedi lead, maybe like a Barriss Afi with some more health. And you got to keep in mind, Starkiller, he deals in his ultimate. It's all about his ultimate and getting to Unleashed. With that, you deal, it says here on his ultimate, deal damage equal to 80% of Starkiller's max health to all enemies and stun them for one turn. So 80% of his max health, I would say, why not go for some leaders or some teammates that can bump his max health up even more and that can always fuel his max health and just playing around that. So I would say, why not go for a Barris? She gives out some more max health on her lead. And then also on her unique, you get some more healing. I think that's pretty interesting. I think that might be one you want to go for, for the Jedi. Um, other leads for that are based around health. I'm trying to think of off the top of my head. Um, let's see here. I, I think that might be it for the Jedi. The Sith might have some. I know that, uh, the EP has some extra healing there. And what you might want to do guys is with Mara Jade out in the game here soon, you might want to just toss Mara Jade in there as well, because guess what? She is unaligned force user as well. 
So it's just like more of a reason to get some of these guys up and running. Because Mara Jade with Star Killer, that could be pretty interesting. A lot of debuffs. She's uh she's unlined force user, she's dark side. You get that bonus with Star Killer. Um, and she has some of the loyal hand as well. I mean, there's a lot of good cool things here with Mara Jade as well. So it's hard to say like the best team with Star Killer, but definitely gonna be something out there. I think though V Smart is going to be coming to life finally after like four years <laughs> so that's pretty much why i made this video talking about some of these guys but really hitting on the points of visus mar and older characters coming back to life that is why i made this video and hopefully you know i was able to shine some light to you guys um in the you know talking about their kits they're both gonna have some very good use in the game between you know mar jade and also star killer very interested to see where maul this maul from conquest will be because he could go in so many different teams not even be with a uh, mandalorian team he could be with uh the lord vader team and then now with star killer he could be with star killer he could be with mara jade he could be really anywhere it's gonna be interesting to see where he'll be to say the least but guys that's about it for today's video uh, i'm just talking about star killer a little bit i'm very excited to see him come to life i think he comes out the 15th which is in uh, about a week. So can't wait for that. Guys, have a good one out there. Until next time, I will see you later. Peace out and have a good one. Bye, guys.